So we're here at the Arm TechCon, and uh, who are you? Hi, my name is Doug Anson. I am a solutions architect uh, with the Internet of Things business unit at Arm. And what we're showing today is a smart parking meter. This has been an effort uh, with IBM, one of our key partners. We've had uh, and been working on uh, integrating our cloud with their cloud, their Watson IoT cloud. And so what we're going to show is the result of that integration in a smart parking meter scenario. And who are you? Yeah, I'm Suma. I'm an engineer with IBM Watson IoT blockchain team. And so I've what's been IBM Watson IoT? IBM Watson IoT is our IoT platform. Uh, it has a lot of integration capabilities uh, with a lot of other solutions that we offer on Bluemix, which is our cloud platform. Watson IoT sits within Bluemix. So, uh, Does it have like to do with the AI? Uh, the Watson uh, AI? Yeah, we could integrate Watson Cognitive along with it. Watson or AI also sits on the same big cloud platform as the same Bluemix cloud platform. But here we are just using the IoT capabilities of our platform. So what's the demo you have here? So what we're going to show here is uh, it's, a, it's a, a demo that starts with a Bluetooth beacon that is our Cordial Beetle board. This is uh, some ARM, ARM radio technology that is emitting a special URL. That URL is a physical web compliant URL, Google physical web compliant. And on my iPhone here, I'm seeing that my Chrome browser notification menu is showing the URL that's being uh, emitted by this beacon within this parking meter. What's the physical web compliant? What does that mean? This is, a, this is an effort that Google has had on creating the ability for you to see and interact with Bluetooth devices from within the Chrome browser or the Android environment. Cool. And so what I'm seeing here is this automatic integration of my, uh, and the discovery of my Bluetooth beacon emitting a URL that's a very special URL that's pinned to this parking meter. So if I click on that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be redirected to the payment site, which is a Bluemix mobile application. This one? Yeah, that's about number three. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bluemix uh, uh, application has a back end within Watson that is a, uh, a node red flow that is going to drive the orchestration of the act of payment. It is also going to integrate with IBM's commerce payment system as well as IBM's blockchain service. Blockchain? To, blockchain service. To, uh, we're going to pay for the parking and we're going to actually pay for it. We have a registered credit card in here, so somebody's uh, paying for a lot of parking today. And, uh, and once the payment completes, we're going to record the active payment as well as the device stay in the blockchain itself. Then thirdly, the orchestrator in Watson IoT is going to interact with our bridge. Our bridge is a new uh, uh, part of Watson IoT that integrates Watson with uh, ARM's embed cloud and embed connector environments. It's going to then use that bridge to update the device state. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to then use that bridge to update the device state, which is my parking meter. So as I paid for it, then the payment state is, done, is, is completed, and I'm going to begin the countdown on the parking meter itself, and I will initiate that countdown through, so, the, uh, through the bridge. So how do you integrate uh, IBM Watson with uh, Embed? How does that work? Right, so That's we integrate, a we, we, okay, this, is a, this is the culmination of about two and a half years of work between ARM and IBM. And what we've done is created a deeply integrated bridge between uh, Embed Cloud and Watson IoT. This is really cool because there's a lot you can do within Watson IoT. The analytics capability, the cognitive capabilities are now, all now available to devices that are ARM embed connected devices uh, and their resources, the resources, the temperatures, the accelerometers and so forth are now being seen in Watson and they can be uh, interacted with or participate in analytics uh, decisions. And so uh, this bridge creates uh, that we've created now provides that capability uh, for anyone who has a Bluemix account and a connector account. So how does it work to do that uh, integration? You, you, you work very hard together uh 
a bunch we of did. engineers we, in a room? We or? worked very hard together. Uh, it was about two years in development. It involved a lot of uh, investigating on how each other's cloud worked <laughs> and, and adapting uh, both of our solutions so that we could come up with a bridge that would, uh, so that would work. You have, to have a, uh, you have to have, or you have to write custom code, have it up on GitHub, pull it down and create an instance, do a lot of configuration. Now it's all about going to the platform, enabling Embed Cloud and giving it to parameters and boom, you're connected. So that's really cool and it's very empowering because it gets all the capability of the Embed Cloud accessible to the Watson platform and vice versa. So we get to build upon all the IoT device data that's coming in and build a whole lot of different solutions on top of it. So there's a lot of things happening on IBM Watson oh, yeah. and a lot of things happening on Embed and that's now they're right. all compatible? And now they're, they're integrated all... and we can we can use them from either from either environment. All right. And uh, how soon can, uh, do, do those do come up? Right yeah, now. so the demo will just pay for parking, so we for us pay. You have to add time. Oh, got it. Bump up some time. We're going to pay for one minute of parking. We agreed. <laughs> and when we do that, the payment will occur, and then the device state is updated, and we see that basically the light's green, the light's green and we're ticking down, and we've also turned off the beacon that shows that the beacon. So it's not discoverable anymore. All right. How soon are these all over the cities everywhere? <laughs> How long does that take? We're going to make it smaller, right? We, we are going to, this is just a first rendition. We're going to combine these two devices into one. We're going to add cameras and other sensors. And we could actually contemplate integrating this down without a pole. The pole is actually very antiquated. Poles and parking meters on poles comes from uh, our historical <laughs> use of, of cars and the analog payment systems of, of long ago. So this could actually be integrated into a wall or into the bottom parking uh, border guard that is uh, on each park, parking lot. Yeah, and it would be really cool if you had a sensor here that captures an image and Watson's visual recognition can process it and then you can know, okay, this is a customer that I have a regular relationship with. I know this car, so let me just process this stuff for him. And maybe you can just authenticate just by looking at the person without even doing anything? Yeah, maybe his license plate. License plate or even your car. If your car itself has Bluetooth, uh, right. the, the car could be discoverable the by the parking discover meter, as, as well as the parking meter being discoverable by the car. And so there are apps on the IBM Watson. Right, that's right. And, yeah. and how hard is it to develop apps for that? Oh, is it like developing apps. an Android app? or? Uh, it, it's, not, it's not even that complex. It's much more simpler than that. So we have a good ecosystem uh, that you can build a lot of apps based on Node.js, and we are bringing in React capabilities. Uh, we have a whole host of different uh, solutions that are up there on Blue Mix that you can leverage. And another fun thing is that you can plug in different capabilities and create your own solution as you go on the cloud platform. And, and all this will be 100% uh, secure, right? Well, 100% is <laughs> always a tough, a tough one to say. We do our best to make this as secure as possible. We have security uh, at the device uh, connection level. We have security between our cloud and the bridge to Watson, and of course there's a lot of security in Watson as well. And then of course there's the traditional security from your mobile device into Watson, and um, that's, you know, we're working on it. What does but, it say, blockchain? That's something that comes from Bitcoin, no? So blockchain is, is being used in this particular instance to uh, create a, a ledger that you could uh, place trust in of this device state and I believe also the transaction activity. That's somewhere. right. So uh, this blockchain is not Bitcoin blockchain. So if you look at Bitcoin or Ethereum or a whole host of other solutions that are out there, they're all about permissionless. So anybody can just pull the client down and participate in the network. But that doesn't work for a business, uh, right? Especially a complex business where a lot of players come in and a lot of things have to interoperate effectively. So we have a permission network. That means that everybody has an identity that is unique and you need to be invited to be participating in the network and we are using IBM's uh, blockchain solution it's actually an implementation of Linux Foundation's Hyperledger and uh, we have the solution here in this case it's very simple it's just doing two things one is it keeps track of all the devices on the network so from an administrative point of view you can go and change the rates that you want to apply uh, you can make the device free 
if you require. Or, and then another thing we do is that we capture all the usage data. So if you look at a, uh, I'll have to log in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're also in here. So if you look at a, a dashboard like this, right? It's a yeah. device management use case that we could potentially have for a parking meter. Uh, so suppose you're a parking meter operator and you have uh, you have your meters running at different places across the country. You have relationship with the, the, with the different counties and they send all the usage data to you. So you don't get inside on what the payment is, who's made the payment and all that uh, or sensitive data. However, you also, you do get insights on what is happening with all your devices, what's the usage patterns, and maybe, for example, what would be a good time to push a firmware update, right? So uh, different players in the system, one is the operator, the other is the county, the third one is the end user. So when you have multiple parties invested in the solution, it makes sense to use a blockchain. Uh, but we do see a lot more tra traction for blockchain in complex business cases, like international shipping and logistics, or uh, provenance, supply chain, and so on. So when you have all of these multiple partners coming together uh, to say ship uh, some commodity across the seas, so you have so many different players. You have a shipper, you have a customer, you have a supplier, you have customs, you have all the intermediary freight forwarders, and all of these parties need to work together. And there should be one state of truth as to what really happened in the system for that solution to be effective end to end. And if IoT also comes in and the devices keep sending their own data, that makes it really robust. So for complex solutions where you have multiple partners with maybe varying points of view, different points of view, coming together to make a solution successful, we see a lot of traction for blockchain solutions. Cool.